What's up everybody, my name's Arcagus, and these are my three essential tips for starting out in Star Trucker. If you don't already know what Star Trucker is, it's basically a European or American truck simulator in space with death. Lots and lots of death. It's actually that death part that I'm trying to help you with in this video, because when it comes to deadly dangers, Star Trucker can be rather unforgiving when such dangers pop up. In most games, you have some time to figure things out before you face its dangers. And resolving the problems will usually immediately remove the danger presented by that problem. But things happen much more fluidly in Star Trucker, and you often have only seconds to react to the most pressing dangers. And if you don't react quickly enough or mitigate the threat presented by that danger, you can still very slowly die even after fixing the problem that presented the danger to begin with. So here are my tips for keeping you alive long enough to master your star trucking skills and amass your own personal fortune. If you end up liking this video and would like to see more content like this in the future, be sure to like and subscribe or drop a comment below. So my first tip for your prolonged survival in Star Trucker is to know your rig. A proper driver needs to be familiar with all ship systems and identifiers so they can quickly respond to any need. You have a wealth of resources available to you to help you monitor every aspect of your rig at any given time. On the left terminal, you have your docking camera, truck status, and system diagnostics, as well as your left side and top mounted camera views. On the right terminal, you have your docking camera, power cell status, and life support status, as well as the right side and bottom mounted cameras. You should also know where the access panels and the ports are located for each system on your ship. In addition to the panels inside the ship, there are also panels and ports outside the ship for managing each of your overheated thrusters, as well as the fuel cap for manually adding reserve fuel to your rig's tank when too far from the nearest fuel station. And you will want to pay attention to your center console most all times, but especially when you hear any sort of warning sound. The console should quickly notify you of any immediate threat to you or your rig. The icons will correspond to the specific threat if it's external or to the specific system if it's an internal failure. These icons are also displayed alongside the corresponding system, both on their access panels as well as on the main breaker. You'll want to familiarize yourself with these icons so you can recognize them at a glance when the corresponding failure lights up on the console and you'll know where to go. And keep in mind, some systems have multiple points of failure such as the spacesuit bay, which uses both a power cell and a UCC, or universal control circuit, to function. And in the case of the oxygenator, you should also be aware of the air filtration system, which uses no power or UCCs, but requires very expensive air filters to provide life support for the oxygenator and for you. So get to know your rig as quickly as possible. Knowing each of its systems and the resources provided to monitor and maintain them is key. The owner's manual is a great guide for filling in any gaps in your understanding of these systems, but you won't truly become an expert at any one system until you have faced off against its maintenance and failures a few times. And if you find yourself running low on power, you can leverage nearby MagDoc for some life-saving external power. This won't completely save you from depleting your core or MagLock systems but it will provide enough power to your gravity, life support, and suit charging systems while you complete any necessary repairs there. Note this does not apply to failed UCCs, however. Lose one of those and that system will shut down and remain shut down even with external power connected. My second tip is to know your environment. It's one thing to have to stop and perform some maintenance or repairs, but things can become much more complicated when you have to worry about outside influences or whether or not you'll be hit by floating debris or another space trucker using the same lane. So be aware of your immediate surroundings, use your external cameras, and move to a safe position before you stop anywhere. If you're in a space lane, move out of the lane so you don't run the risk of another careless driver colliding with you or absconding with your rig while you are EVA and powerless to stop it or to save yourself from a very long and cold death. And my final tip is to stow everything. The game gives you a couple of crates to start out with and even gives you some hints as to the types of objects you should be keeping in those crates. 
you'll find you have several items just lying around in your rig in the beginning, and if you're not careful, you will quickly realize that just normal activity on the rig is enough to slowly damage these items over time, let alone the shock and damage such items can take when you break too hard or suddenly come to stop from a collision. So stow everything, especially electronic and fragile items like UCCs and air filters. Shops will often carry additional crates and boxes you can buy, and I recommend you buy as many as you can fit in your stowage. So those are my essential tips for staying alive as you get started in Star Trucker. These tips won't make you rich or turn you into a master space truck driver by themselves, but they should help you stay alive long enough to master your craft and find your destiny on the space lanes. As a final note, I should mention something about the difficulty levels of the game. If you're like me and have come from a mechanical or an engineering background, you might find yourself tempted to try playing at the mechanic or hardcore difficulty level. My recommendation for now is that you don't, at least not until you are proficiently good at the game's driving and logistics gameplay, enough that you're able to deliver most cargo hauls on time and without penalties. In the harder difficulty levels, if you're struggling with delivery times or driving penalties, you'll find yourself drowning in debt and looming maintenance costs, and it will be very difficult to get yourself out of that hole. If you are looking for more challenge, I strongly suggest you turn off the repair and waypoint markers in the game options and use the custom difficulty level to tailor a more enjoyable experience with just the right amount of challenge to suit your tastes. Troubleshooting a system failure can become much more rewarding when you don't have that repair marker leading you right to the part that needs fixing. If you ever get swamped, you can always turn the repair marker back on temporarily to get you out of a jam. All right, truckers. That's all I have for you. Now you can get out there and put the hammer down and back it down slowly. But as always, stay safe. And I'll see you in the next one.